right, this is a quick tutorial on how to use a couple of programs to stream music through either a game that you're playing perhaps or a Skype call or whatever it is you'd like to use it. Normally you'd use your microphone to either talk to someone or play sounds through it. Uh, this method allows you to play higher quality, usually more clear sounds and it just takes a couple of programs. Now there's two programs you need and they don't have to be these specific ones, you just have to do um, what these two programs do and these are the ones I found that are easiest. First there's Virtual Audio Cable. Virtual Audio Cable is a program that allows you to tell your computer basically that you have your microphone plugged into your speakers which would allow you to play any music that you'd be playing on your speakers would go straight into your microphone port. Now you can do this with audio cables however it's a lot more complicated not nearly as high quality or controllable. Now what you want to do is you can download this and just to try it out you can use the trial version. However, as it shows right here, there's a female voice that will remind you every so often yelling trial at you and it's just not what you want to be hearing over it. Now you want to download this, you can also get the full version if this does work for you or perhaps a different program, but you basically set it up the same way. Now what you want to do is you want to download that program and install it and we'll take a look at that in just a moment. As well as you want this program here called G-Hotkey. Now on average computer games don't allow you to just have your mic open all the time, you usually have a push to talk button. So what this does is you go here and you download G-Hotkey and this is going to allow us to set up a little macro in order to tell the computer that it's uh, pressing down a key all the time even though it isn't. So once you've got these two downloaded there's a couple things you gotta do with the virtual audio cable. You wanna come down here to where it installs to and you need to find the virtual audio cable. You wanna open that up and you wanna open the control panel as an administrator. You wanna set this from one cable which is what will be default to two cables and press set. Once you have two cables, you can close this program out. After that, you want to go down to that same one, and you're going to open three of these audio repeater MMEs if you'd like to use your headset as well as be able to stream. And what you want to do is there's a fairly simple configuration for these. You set your first one to line one as the wave in, and the wave out is line two. And then you press start. You set the wave in here as your microphone, in this case it's my microphone to Plantronics, to the wave out, line 1. So if you're looking at it so far, you've got your microphone goes into line 1, line 1 goes to line 2. Over here, you want to take line 2, and you want to go to your speakers, which in this case is my line 2 Plantronics ones. This works best with the USB speakers for the most part. And you press start. Now, this will let you hear yourself talk, as well as it'll allow all of the music and whatnot you're playing through here to be played through here and everything that goes into here you'll be able to hear your line too otherwise you won't be able to hear what's going on with this one now in order for people to hear everything that's going on in your computer you want to go to the playback devices and you want to select line 2 and set it as default. Once it's set as default, anything you play on your computer, whether it be through some sort of audio program or whether it be YouTube videos in an internet browser, will be played through line two. Now what you want to do at this point is you want to go into the game and you want to set your game's audio in, your microphone in line, as line two. You're going to want to make sure to set your audio out to the specific headset you're using. Otherwise, all the sounds from the game will be played through line two, and everyone's going to hear just kind of an infinite feedback, and you don't want that. Now, once you have this all set up, you're good and ready to go. All you need to do is hold down a button in order for them to hear it, or if it doesn't require push to talk, you're just good to go and start playing music, and we'll all play over this. Now, if you want it to also work as an option to just hold down a key without you having to, you need to create a new one. Now what you do is you go in here and you create a new one right here. And you just press add name. You want to go here and you want to press edit. The very first time you edit it, you're going to need to find a save location. And what it wants is a shortcut. So what I do is I go to the sample pictures and you just create a shortcut. So now you've got a shortcut there. And we 
we navigate to that same folder. We go to the pictures in this case, sample. You want to find something that's just never going to move. So you've got that right there. You want to change this to global hotkeys. That will allow you to open up the program and allow you to use your hotkeys in any other program that you're using on your computer and not just this picture you just opened up. You want to set your deactivation key. I found a good one on my computer is the pause key. You would just want to make sure it's a key that you don't hit very often, otherwise you'll be turning it off when you don't want to. So let me just find that here real quick. So, you got that set to pause, and this is set to on off, and I, you can set it to numbs lock or any of those. I usually just keep it on scroll lock. And what that means is every time you turn it on, you need to make sure your scroll lock is on as well, otherwise it will not be functioning. And then, once you've got all this set up right here, you've got a save location, you've got your deactivation key, and you've got these set with your global hotkeys. You go to your remap one. On mine, what I do is I use my play pause media button. And so this is the button I press to toggle this key. In my game settings, I have the talk button as the play next track. So basically, what we have right here is if I press the play pause media, it tells the computer I'm pressing down next track. So, what you want to do is you want to press key should remain depressed. What this will do is every time you press play media, it'll toggle next track on or off. So if I press play pause media, until I press that again, the computer will think that it is held down. So once you've got this set up, you're good to go. You can use any button here to toggle any other button. This is just how I personally have it set up. So once you've got these set up, you just press the X and it'll ask if you want to save. You say yes. Now you just want to go and select the one you've got here and press run which as you can see just open this up I can minimize that now once scroll locks on all I have to do in order to hold down my play next track button is press my play media button so using those shortcuts we've got right there we're all good to go to start holding it down now in order to close G hotkey you'll see it's right here you do have to have scroll lock on and then you need to press whatever you're stop button is in my case the pause button and that'll take you back to this page so that should be all you need to do to go ahead and start running your games quick rundown again you need to set your virtual audio cable from line 1 to line 2 microphone to line 1 line 2 to your speakers you need to set this up in order to toggle a button on and off and you need to make sure that your computer while playing the music is default set for your playback recording to line 2 which lets you play all audio that you plays out over your computer speakers normally straight into what you would consider your microphone that you're streaming out over it you do need to make sure that you're using the audio repeater MME or it will not work and the first time you opened it you did need to go ahead and open up the control panel as an administrator and set it to two lines because we do need both of those if you need more of them you can always set it up higher you can go up pretty high you just press set thank you for watching my short tutorial here well, kinda long but if you have any other questions just leave the comments in the section below or send me a message I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can it is a little bit complicated the first time you set it up but once you've done it a few times you get going pretty easy and it's you know not bad at all. So once again, any questions, just let me know and I'll see what I can do to help you out.